Dette er den ukentlige nyhetssendingen fra Europa. Dette er den ukentlige nyhetssendingen fra Europa. Every day they used to be business sitting there for magic potions destroying me friends stealing his home Hi and welcome to uh, this week's European News Weekly our science section um, and we've got Jimmy Hagen we have Hervé Courtois, uh, who's an activist and uh, a very uh, prolific uh, blogger. Uh, he gets uh, information out and has been covering the Fukushima nuclear disaster, amongst other nuclear-related stories. Um, and uh, obviously this week we have, uh, on the 6th, we have the remembrance for Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Um, and basically what we want to do now is just uh, introduce you a little bit to the situation that happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Now, there's been uh, certainly a lot of uh, dispute over the final figures uh, and, you know, w what happened and all the rest of it. Um, and I'd just like to start off with just a quick story um, which uh, came to m my attention uh, a month or so ago. I think we reported it here. And that was the uh, Hiroshima train. And there was some survivors from the Hiroshima tri uh, Hiroshima uh, nuclear ex uh, uh, nuclear explosion, and they basically got on the train, and then they went to Nagasaki, and when they got to Nagasaki, the second bomb went off, um, and there was only a couple of people that actually survived um, off that train, uh, but uh, I just thought I'd bring that story in uh, just to tie the two nuclear explosions together. Now. In terms of hu human cost, uh, we know that the number of deaths, uh, I think within the first year, uh, were in Hiroshima, 310,000 uh, persons, and there was 90 to uh, 140,000 uh, estimated number of acute, acute deaths. And in Nagasaki, there was a quarter of a million, 250,000 persons, and about 60 to uh, 80,000 people uh, basically were killed. Uh, due to acute deaths. And that would have been from the blast and from the year afterwards through uh, uh, bad burns and various other uh, radio, you know, obviously radiation induced uh, illnesses as well. So while we're looking at that, um, now I was talking with uh, 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 Christopher Busby uh, yesterday, and um, he's uh, bringing an art article out on RT, an opinion. Uh, concerning this uh, story and his kind of major point was that in reality the way they measured the uh, cancers and the way that the estimates were done and the way the epidemiology was done was, was kind of flawed. It was very narrow, it, it uh, didn't take into account all the possibilities. So what happened, what, you know, what he was saying basically is that there is some doubt as to some of the long-term effects. And when we're looking at the long-term effects, we've got a report um, which uh, basically was saying about uh, breast cancer uh, and that there was an increase of uh, breast cancer uh, after the situation, uh, you know, after the actual nuclear blast and going in ahead of time. Um, there was a period of time where the breast cancers were uh, had increased a lot. And, so that was one story. And then when I was looking at another story, uh, in, uh, which was published in PubMed, um, they were talking about the fact that uh, in Nagasaki, um, and this was uh, posted in 1994, it was saying that liver cancers were the highest in the world. And they were saying that uh, the, uh, the cases of uh, breast cancer had reduced, uh, and were, well, not had reduced, but were the lowest in the world. Uh, the interesting thing here is is that the breast cancer, which had increased in Hiroshima, uh, just kind of leveled off, while the rest of the world sort of caught up 
with, uh, you know, after the nuclear age, you know, more iodine-131 and other radionuclides in the atmosphere, the breast cancer had increased. Um, so, uh, in other countries, and therefore was uh, uh, basically the breast cancer in, in, in uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima was actually much lower than the rest of the world. Uh, maybe because they were being more careful about uh, about the isotopes that they would be taking in through food or whatever. It's, we can only draw a conclusion on that. But there certainly are still uh, incidents of various cancers in these areas that are higher than the rest of the world and the rest of Japan. So at the end of the day, that was a, there was a cancer incidence in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan, 1958 to 1987. Now, I'm basically going to now sort of bring us into uh, another part of the story. Um, what we're going to be talking about now is the evacuees in Fukushima. And the problem with this is that the, at the moment, the way the Japanese, the US, and the UK, um, using the flawed Hiroshima and Nagasaki studies uh, to estimate problems in Japan, in the local communities uh, that were uh, highly contaminated by radiation. Um, so when we've got this going on, we, we can see that uh, if, if they are saying that there's no problem, then people can move back in their eyes. Uh, but if we're saying that there are going to be liver cancers, they're going to be increased breast cancers, and of these sort of things, and they're willing to put people back, and then I would say, and especially when we're talking about children, uh, I would say, and, and women who are more susceptible to radiation, that we basically have to bear this in mind. When we have this interview now with, with Hervé Courtois, and he, he knows a lot about this situation, about the evacuees, and I just wanted to bring, and we will be talking about health effects uh, during the course of this uh, interview, but I just wanted to tie in the Hiroshima and Nagasaki story, uh, because it really is the basis of why the Fukushima evacuees are being moved back into Fukushima, or are being tried to be moved back into Fukushima now. And as we will find out, they've pillated, uh, they've been uh, sort of brainwashed by the, the media, uh, they've been brainwashed by some of the scientists that uh, work with the science media centers in the world, um, and are trying to push nuclear as a, as a good source of energy so uh, and to overcome the bad press that they got the bad public relations they got from the Fukushima disaster so so with that um, Hervé Courtois I'd like to introduce you well I'd like to introduce you to our guests and, and welcome you to the show okay. uh, you've been here once before and uh, we had a very bad connection I think now uh, our uh, systems are all up and running. And um, welcome to the show, Herf. Could, would you like to give us a quick summary about the situation with the evacuees? We've heard yes. lots of stories. Um, and would you like to update us, please? Yes. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, you see, Fukushima has a population, uh, Fukushima Prefecture has a population of a little above 2 million people. Out of that 2 million people, uh, only 118,860 have been evacuated. So it's very little. Uh, 73,000, more or less, have been evacuated within the prefecture, and 45,000 plus have been evacuated, have evacuated, outside of the prefecture. Four years after the earthquake and the tsunami uh, touch up to a meltdown, the Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is pressing to lift the evacuation orders by March 2017 and cut off compensation to the victim of the disasters by 2018. The move would allow and some say force 10 of thousands of refugees to go back to their home. The pro-nuclear prime minister says that the move proposed in June is aimed at speeding up 
Fukushima reconstruction. Under the national government guidelines, the residents in government-ordered evacuation zone and specific spots recommended for evacuation where radiation dosage is regionally high are entitled to 100,000 yen each a month under TEPCO's compensation for mental distress. 100,000 is about a, a little less than 1,000 uh, euro monthly. According to a partial estimate, there is no total public estimate of the cost of the Fukushima disaster so far. A partial estimate says it's about $100 billion. 60% of that has been spent for compensation measures. So compensating people for their loss of lands and jobs is very expensive to the government. And since the government has bailed out the company that run the Fukushima reactors, it's basically now the government that is liable. Took preparing to declare some of the evacuation zone around the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant a safe place to live. Tokyo wants people back in the area as a matter of reducing the overall cost of the disaster. However, environmentalists warn many areas still shows radiation levels 20 times the globally accepted limit. I don't think it is possible to clean up in the real sense of the word meaning that you take away the added radioactivity that has been contaminating the soil, the roof, and everything. It's impossible. So what you can do is you can reduce the radioactive contamination in some of the areas. You can take off the soil, you can decontaminate what has been done by water spray. But keep in mind, 80% of Japan and of Fukushima prefectures uh, are mountains. And in this area as well, uh, there's a lot of dense forest. There's absolutely no way even to slightly decontaminate that region. So you will have a, situa a stable situation of contamination, but it will move all the time. And new radiation will wash down from the mountains and forest into the already decontaminated lands to recontaminate again. Some areas in Fukushima have been decontaminated up to five times already. Always the radiation, the contamination to return to the pre-decontamination level. Now, a lot, uh, a, no, a number of opinion poll surveys have shown that the, uh, the percentage of people who are willing to go back is 20%. Many people are still undecided, and about half of, of them decided to not go back. People have to imagine, beside the radiation situation, what they are going to go back to. You should not forget that many of those homes in Japan are made of wood and they are basically in extremely bad shape and would have to be completely redone. There is no much to go back to. And on top of that, there is the radiation issue. There is also the issue going back to their home, but what about their neighbors? What about collectivity, services, all kinds of social issues beside the pure health issue? The Prime Minister Abe would like the people of Japan to believe that they are decontaminated vast areas of Fukushima to level safe enough for people to live in. The reality is that this is a policy doomed to failure. The forests of Fukushima prefecture, 80% of the land, are a vast stock of radioactivity that will remain both a direct hazard and source of potential recontamination for hundreds of years. 
it's impossible to decontaminate. The elimination of compensation will effectively force people back into another environment that is dangerous for their health. Stripping nuclear victims of their already inadequate compensation, which may force them to have to return to unsafe, highly radioactive areas for financial reason, reasons, amounts to economic coercion. Let's be clear, this is a political decision by the Abe government, not based on science, data, or public health. Residents of across Japan have staged protests and filed lawsuits to block nuclear restart. And polls shows that in the aftermath of the Fukushima disasters, a clear majority of the Japanese public opposes nuclear power. In addition, surveys reveal low public confidence in the Japanese government and the Tokyo Electrical Power Company, TEPCO the company behind the Fukushima Daiichi plant, that continues to release radiation into the ecosystem and into our atmosphere. Despite public opposition, Abe is aggressively pursuing a return to nuclear power. Earlier this month, Abe Liberal Democratic Party revealed that it, it aims to have 20% of the country electricity supplied by nuclear power by 2030. This coming August 10, they will restart the first nuclear plant uh, in Japan since two years. Since two years, there was no nuclear plant uh, operating in Japan. They will restart the first nuclear plant in Sendai, in south of Japan, on the island of Kyushu which is surrounded by nine active volcanoes. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Over no, quite, yeah? I was going to say, basically, it was quite, uh, quite, quite interesting, that story. But it, I, I think, it, you know, coming back to Hiroshima, I think it's quite bad that they would turn around and start a reactor four days after the Hiroshima and nuclear uh, disasters, you know, the uh, yeah. ex atomic yeah. explosions. And, you know, I was, I was looking at uh, uranium twisting the dragon's tail the other day, um, and it really seemed to me that it was a kind of a, a, a sort of a pro-nuke sort of, you know, everything's okay with uranium kind of story. Um, and, and it certainly was uh, very biased. You know, I, when I was looking at it, for instance, uh, they, did, they, they were saying about uh, uh, Marie Curie, and they were saying her doorknob, you know, wasn't too radioactive. And uh, he was uh, saying that 20 times the normal uh, amount isn't too bad, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, as a scientist, as a 33-year-old male, um, maybe he was right. But certainly not as a child or a female, uh, that would certainly be a problem. Um, and they certainly weren't talking about the stories of, like, the radium, uh, uh, the radium uh, watch uh, painters, you know, many of whom who died, um, and uh, and the ones that survived had uh, serious, you know, cancer, migraines, bad teeth. Uh, they had lots of things, and and uh, basically there was no studies done, so there's no definitive proof that that the radium caused their illnesses. Um, and uh, I was quoting from a story there by NPR.org, uh, which is entitled May Keen one of the last radium girls dies at 107, but she had a whole life of uh, bad, uh, bad health, you know. Um, so it's quite, uh, quite a nasty one, you know. And she said that she couldn't tie it to her job in the radium factory. Um, and, and so when, when we're looking at uh, who to trust in terms of scientists and uh, health physicists, um, you know, and we're talking about uh, was it volcanoes around a nuclear power plant? Um, you know, it, and and there's this whole PR machine that's moving to make everybody feel very comfortable about radiation and nuclear power. Um, so 
I mean, I mean, there's been a lot of stories about uh, how the, the the press has been manipulated. Uh, could could you tell us a little bit about that and how they can get away with uh, starting these? I can, I can give you a late example, uh, which happened this week. There's a um, there's a student, a high school student, a young girl. She's maybe uh, 13, 14 years old. She's from Futaba City, one of the one of the town municipality which has been heavily contaminated by Fukushima and completely evacuated. Okay, that's also where they they they, they are devising to make a storage facility uh, for the radioactive waste and all the radioactive debris, and also where they have. Uh, a, an operating incinerator. Okay, now she lives. She is a refugee living in a refugee camp. You know, some uh, metallic or wooden huts in the town of Iwaki City, the city where my my Japanese French daughter uh, is from and still living. And uh, that student. That young student, who is a high school student, who is going into a high school in Iwaki, they are coaching her right now to go to the UN to make a speech in front of the UN delegates how, how Fukushima Prefecture uh, is recovering from the Fukushima disaster that they are reconstructing Fukushima. Yes, there are some little tiny places where the, the contamination, the radiation is high, and, uh, but the, the majority of the prefecture is okay. We are reconstructing it, blah, 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 blah. They imagine they are using a victim, a young age victim, you know, a young girl through her high school, coaching her, sending her to the UN to make a speech to lie about the situation. Can you imagine well, how, how vicious it is, how sly and disgusting it is, is using a victim? That, that young girl is still living in a refugee camp, you know? and they are using it, using her manipulating her, sending her to the UN to, to tell lie about the situation, you know? I mean, we had the similar thing, you know, when we were talking about the sort of uh, uh, Sir Martin Sorrell, and he, he's the head of Ogilvy and Maha, who is part of the uh, WPP, LLC, PR, you know, public Rep relations uh, company. So they've basically turned around, uh, and there's an interview on Japan Today with uh, Sir Martin Sorrell, who's in charge of this. And he was, uh, he was talking to the interviewer about how, how weak Japanese PR was. And of course, he'd come in and bought up a lot of Japanese companies under the umbrella of WPP. And he was basically uh, explaining how he would deal with the situation or any situation that arose on behalf of the Japanese government who he was working for. And he said that he would use public figures um, such as Lady Gaga or other musicians or celebrities or, or uh, sports people like they did with the uh, English uh, cricket team in Fukushima. Mm -hmm. And they would use these to send a message that everything is okay. And, yeah. and certainly this particular girl, this girl, this story about the girl, you know, when you put it in context with the Fukushima evacuation trial and the Fukushima people that went to uh, the UN to ask for children to be taken away from the more contaminated areas um, uh, as a precautionary method, measure, uh, that the Japanese then stepped in uh, the Japanese government stepped in and then basically whitewashed the whole thing. They actually said things in the UN that they asked to have retracted because they were so over the top. But some of the stuff that was still over the top, that didn't sound so bad, 
they wanted kept in. And it was basically, a, and then we have to bear in mind that the Japan is one of the largest economies in the world and that it supplies a lot of aid money, which in my opinion is used for uh, military purposes as well, but and economic benefits. But they, they're one of the biggest contributors of aid money um, to the UN. So uh, basically they have a lot of power in the UN to block uh, in, in, you know, the UN evacuation uh, uh, trial, so, uh, not the trial, but the UN evacuation uh, petition to the UN, a UNHCR. So that yeah. seemed to have it, been it, blocked. It, now. The, question, the question to counter that young girl uh, coach speech would be to tell her in 10, 20 years from now, when you will have multiple cancers, or if you marry and you have a child who will have some inborn uh, birth defect, okay? Uh, will you? Would you say the same thing? Another thing: it's okay to to live in Fukushima and to reconstruct the building, but then you don't. You should not breathe the air, and you should not eat the contaminated food, because there's the people, you know, I've been in Fukushima visiting my daughter uh, three months after the start of the disaster in 2011, the month of June. You know, the biggest problem is what to eat. You know, what to eat and what to drink. Yeah. Because the contamination is there. It enters you, not only through the air that you breathe, but more through what you eat. And you cannot protect yourself from it. Most of people don't have the means to buy imported food. They have to look to eat local food. And you cannot trust the, the labeling of the food. Because some of the food which is produced in Fukushima or, or fish in Fukushima are sold on the national market under different origin, uh, labeling of origin. You know? Cool. So how can you protect from, uh, from radiation, from contamination in your food? That's a big question. You can buy yourself, you can buy yourself a, a Geiger counter for a few hundred US, a few hundred euro. But to buy yourself a Becquerel monitor to measure the content of uh, radionuclide in your food, that is an expensive apparatus. And it's really time consuming. You have to measure all your food. Just a, a, a Becquerel monitor the lo costs about 8,000, 10,000 euros. Not everybody can afford to buy a, mon a Becquerel monitor <laughs> to measure their food at home. You know? yeah, well, I, we did hear stories, obviously, via Ian Thomas Ash, the document ma uh, documentary maker, yeah. that, uh, peop that, that nurseries were actually. Uh, buying that piece of equipment so that they could make sure that all the food that was going to the child, the young children in their care in the nurseries uh, was getting clean food. So um, that, that, uh, the, the, there is all this in the background, isn't there? You know that that people yeah, aren't talking about. But you have also, you see, if you remember, do you you know what is bento? Bento is the school lunch. Okay, the school lunches that uh, the children take with him to eat during lunchtime at school, right? Uh -huh. Now, all those concerned mothers in, uh, in Fukushima, they were pre controlling the food, trying to buy uh, ingredients which come from South Japan or from abroad to prepare their young kids' uh, uh, lunchbox, right? But then the, the Japanese government through the, the education minister, uh, department, right, made pressure on the school uh, teachers, directors, right, and there was this peer pressure to, that the, the children should eat the lunch offered at school, you know, uh, sure. with Fukush prepared with Fukushima food, ground food, because that is to support the, the Fukushima reconstruction. 
if you are bringing your, if you are a child and you bring your your mom prepared school school lunch, right? You are being a spoiled kid, you know, and you are a, a traitor to the nation. You are not supporting the Fukushima reconstruction. So then the other child will um, will um, will persecute the one who is bringing his uh, lunchbox, you know. So in the end, the children refuse their mother's prepared school lunch, you know, uh, to to escape from the 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 persecution of the other children and and teachers etc and in the end you have everybody eating the contaminated food at school you know? it's madness you know it's really madness that well, we can we can only hope that the food was checked out to a degree and we do know that acro did do some testing on children um, yeah and, acro and crirad uh, and uh, and yeah. also the CMRS from uh, Wataru Iwata. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, there, are so, there are some NGOs doing some good job there. They are yeah. doing the job that the government is not doing. Yeah? That's right. Yeah, no, absolutely. And this is the major point we have to say is that with, it was on the ground activists yeah. and uh, NGOs and, such as Creed And with very little means. Yeah. The problem is the means because you see this this uh, nu pro nuke lobby and their accomplices, the govern the local governments, they have million million dollars budget, you know, uh, to control the media, to 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 print and brainwash the people, you know. Uh, those activists on the ground have, have absolutely very little means to fight that gigantic uh, propaganda machine. You know? Yeah. Well. The propaganda machine is Ogilvy and Maha, uh, and what we see also is that they employ specialists uh, via the science, science media center to come across and say and bring out papers and put out reports. So we, we have a, a we have a report at the moment uh, which is resurfacing once again, where people are trying to bring in hormesis and get rid of the. Uh, yeah, the, that's what they are trying in the U.S. Yes, yeah, but that will connect to Japan, though, won't yeah, it? Yeah, of course. And another thing, have you seen that in Japan now they are pushing to, to, to change the, the threshold limit, maximum limit for the workers? That's right, 250, 250 millisieverts yeah, per year. Yeah. But you, you see, it's a, it's a worldwide nuclear lobby. They push one thing in one country and then it affects the others. And then they bring it to the other countries as well. Okay? Yeah. I mean, we, it, here in Europe, we had a, a recent thing where the European uh, Union has uh, made, uh, asked that all uh, member states of the European Union have uh, plans, have plans uh, drawn up for a nuclear waste dump. Uh, and so in Ireland, where, where we have no nuclear reactors of note, uh, we're basically uh, uh, being asked to draw up plans for a nuclear dump waste site, uh, which can only be for other people's waste. Yeah. Well, just while you were away, I, I just explained to Jimmy, I just explained what, it was, what happened in France. Uh, in France, the, the nuclear lobby Areva lied that they were recycling the radioactive waste, the nuclear waste, in the La Hague uh, recycling plant. They lied for many years. And actually, it was all bullshit because what they were doing, they were vitrifying it, compacting it, and sending it to the Soviet Union, okay, to be uh, buried. In, uh, in Kazakhstan or in Siberia and God knows where, right? And it's a Greenpeace, the, friend, the Greenpeace friends, which for a decade fought that lie, exposed that lie, and it's only recently that uh, the contract between Russia and France ended up, you know? So the La Hague is not exporting its nuclear waste anymore to to ex-Soviet Union, Russia, That's right. and and then the the nuclear waste has been piling up, piling up, piling up in La Hague, 
they have no more space where to <laughs> where to store it. You know, Very and worrying. also and also on the in, in the in each of the French nuclear plant, they have been accumulating stocking nuclear waste which they cannot could not send to La Hague. So they've been planning a, a, a burial site in Bure. Uh, for sure, you have heard about it. Bure is between the, the the German border, Strasbourg and Paris, very close to the Champagne production province. Okay, oh, lovely. Between the Champagne and between Strasbourg, and um, they have, the government have been trying many times to get the Bure uh, dumping site, burial site approved, and they could not have it passed. And just uh, recently, uh, they use an exception decree, which is called 93-R, which was supposed to be used only in emergency uh, security situation. Right? and which has been misused by the French government for uh, business neoliberal reforms to which they incorporated the, the burial of nuclear waste in Bure. <laughs> okay, I mean, talking about Greenpeace now, we come back to Japan. Now, yeah. Greenpeace did a report and it clearly stated that the Japanese government was not cleaning out the correct areas. It was going for these heavily uh, areas, you know, obviously to try and get people back, but it wasn't cleaning areas like in Fukushima where there was being build-ups, they were finding hot spots and build-ups of radiation, you know, even as far as Tokyo. So instead of cleaning these sort of, and looking for these type of hot spots, you know, uh, all the way from Fukushima across uh, Ozi National Park and in, into the Tokyo area, Instead of cleaning up all these sort of areas, they've decided that they would um, uh, concentrate on some of the heavier areas where they, you know, and ignore those sort of areas. And Greenpeace pulled them up on this. Now, obviously, now we're talking, going back to the J Japan and the evacuees. Now, with that in mind, we can see how the whole PR machine behind the government is uh, is advising the government to basically handle the situation you know with the media in america studies being brought out uh media in japan uh you know and and the manipulation of science data uh the uh the, the you know even pbs pbs being forced to do a sort of pro nuke story now they would normally be doing the other side of the story wouldn't they but but they've been actually made to do this damn story basically you know um, and uh, it is just it is all the timing is perfect for getting people back yeah for then, this September yeah they are the sending thing, back the people in September they are yeah. lifting the evacuation orders this coming September yeah that's crazy and and uh, obviously the, they've got the UN tied up so the UN can't uh, even though there's been reports done and questions asked, uh, they never really got answered in the UN response that Japanese did, um, and it just seems to have died a death. Uh, and we've got quite serious um, sort of security things going on in Japan, uh, as well as all the press, which is is you know where uh, bloggers are being followed around by um, shady characters that may be Japanese secret service or working for a private uh, sort of investigation firm or security firm employed by uh, Ogilvy and Maha, you know, that they, they have uh, Muller and Burston, who are the ones that target uh, activists in places like in Louisiana after the BP oil spill. And obviously, uh, we've got them attacking Shell Oil uh, activists in Ireland off the, off the coast of Mayo, County Mayo here. So we're seeing all these connections, and um, what sort of what, what are the people doing about it? Um, uh, I, I hear there's uh, there's some court cases and things going on. Can you fill us in with some of that? Some of the uh, the fight back against the corporations, if you like. Well, <laughs> there's been there's been some uh, the on, the only one which have been uh, 
successful were in South Korea. Some people in South Korea uh, put court case against some nuclear company, some nuclear plant for having cancers, and they won in court. Uh, that's the only that's the only uh, court case against corporation which uh, have been successful against nuclear corporation. Sure. Uh, I mean, we've got Chris Busby in the UK, and he, he has the yeah, with evidence the veterans, to win yeah. the case, yeah. but they keep delaying the case, changing yeah. the judge, changing the, you know, they, they've got all these delays, and we've been reporting on that. And, of course, in Japan, we hear that the courts are very unfavorable, um, you know, maybe because the governments are using the national security yeah. Uh, as, now, as now they are charging. They are charging the ex-president and vice. They are indi indi indicted, indicting the the ex-president of uh, TEPCO and the two vice presidents. Uh, charging them because you know they 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 could have avoided the tsunami, but they lower the the recommended height of the protection walls, right? For the tsunami, yeah. For the tsunami. So there's some, they are charging them, uh, they are indicting them for having, they could have avoided the, the tsunami. You know? but okay, but I isn't think, this a distraction away from the earthquake damage caused by the nuclear I reactor? Think, I think they are only, it's only a dress show, you know? They want, I think they want to relieve some, some steam, you know. They want, they see that the people are really uh, irritated and are, are working up, you know. So they want, they are using this court case to calm down the, the people's opinion, you know. Uh, I don't think nothing will come out of, of this uh, TEPCO indictment, you know. Sure. And, and even if it does, it... It, uh, it's not, it's not, you know, I mean, the, the, I, I, you know, I believe, I mean, I, I saw a picture in the early days, a, a high definition picture of smoke coming out of one of the reactors before the tsunami hit, you know? Yeah, and yeah. The, 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 I mean, the, the problem in Fukushima was already there in one of the reactors before the tsunami and before the earthquake. Right. Right. So... That's that's quite intriguing. So I mean, what what's what what um, I mean? How are people fighting back? Can they fight back then if the courts are, and the the uh, the media and everything else is is aimed against them? How how do they how do they stand by their rights? You know? It has it has to be. Uh, for me, I advocate at the grassroots level. You know, it has to be communities. You know. It has to be people power, you know, at the at the grassroots level, you know, on their local politician. And of That's, course, of course, uh, social media is important for that. Of course, social social media to uh, and uh, alternative alternative um, uh, media, you know, to oh. to bring awareness to raise awareness. To the, the to the concerned citizen, you know, of what's going on in their backyard and the dangers of what they have in their backyard, and that the, the solution will not come from the top. Okay, the solution will not come from the top leaders of whatever party. The solution can always only come from us, the citizen at the ground level. You know. Well said. Well said. Uh, J Jimmy, uh, I mean, uh, you're sitting there very quietly. There, do you want to do you want to come in with something here uh, at all? Um, yeah, well, I was just uh, going over some of those numbers uh, from the evacuees from uh, Fukushima. Now, yeah. it, a city of two million. Now, no, not city. The prefecture. Prefecture. The prefecture of Fukushima. There are about uh, tw there's 27 prefecture in Japan. And Fukushima, in terms of uh, of uh, land, is one of the biggest. Okay, uh, but the population is only two million. Two million. No. Yeah. A hundred. A hundred and eighteen thousand. No, were evacuated. Uh, no, the the evacuees 
are 100, the total of the evacuees is 118,862. So that leaves 1.8 million approximately who did not evacuate. So yes. yes. 1.8 million people in a danger zone. Now, no, I, they are not the only one in danger zone. Actually, actually, you see, even to talk about Fukushima is, is, is wrong, okay? Because uh, the disaster is the nuclear plant of Fukushima Daiichi, which is located in Fukushima. But the area of the contamination is not only Fukushima. Mm -hmm. It involves about something like eight, uh, eight or ten prefectures. Some prefecture is the north, some is the south, some is the east, some is the whole prefecture. So to, to say that only Fukushima is, is contaminated is wrong. That only Fukushima is uh, affected is wrong. Okay. You, you have the trees, up, you know, the whole forest up in the mountains. That yeah, that, but what I say, when you, when you considered uh, that, that, that what you call regions in Japan, okay? The northeast of Japan is Tohoku, okay? And the region south of Tohoku, which is called Kanto, to which Tokyo belongs, uh, is, is the east of Japan, okay? The east of Japan is contaminated to different degree, okay? Uh, with some uh, more hot spot than others, okay? But it's not only Fukushima. It's not only Fukushima. But if you consider Fukushima uh, out of two million, you can say less than 200,000 have been evacuated. That's not even 10%. No, that's crazy because I'm, cause what got me thinking about that was because when, when the Chernobyl disaster happened, there was a 50-mile exclusion zone, and I think that 50-mile exclusion zone is still in effect to this day. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, well, well, you see, the, the Fukushima was 20 kilometers. That's less than 50 miles. 20 kilometers is what, 16, 15 miles? Yeah, yeah. It's first a 20, 20 kilometers, then extended to 30 kilometers, and now they want to lift it all <laughs> and to send back the people in. The yeah. little who have been evacuated, they want to send them back there, forcing them financially by suspending their, their, their compensation. Also, the ones who are living, you know, in shelters, Okay, that uh, they want their sick. Out of this, uh, there's still about sixty thousand people living in shelters. Okay, they want now the people to pay rent for those shelters. It's a way to force them back to the evacuated zone. Eh? Right. It's madness. It's a. Uh, it's criminal. It's a. Uh, it's a slow. Death, condemnation. Yeah. Uh, to well, put things in perspective, uh, w when it comes to um, the, the people are getting in the region of a hundred thousand yen. Uh, what would that be in euro, for example, just for comparison? Uh, one one hundred thousand yen is about uh, a little less than uh, one thousand euro a month. Right, so a, a, a little bit like a, a basic social welfare. Yes, yes. Right, right. Japan is expensive, though. Bear that in mind. But they they want to suspend that also. You see, they will cut all this compensation by beginning 2018. And and of course, to Tetco have uh, had um, massive profits. Their biggest profits. Yeah, uh, they, they declared big profits <laughs> just yeah. recently. They they this. Uh, last week, uh, they, de they declared their quarterly profit, right? Their quarterly profit tripled. They have tripled their profit. Okay. 
It's crazy. And at same so, time, and at same time, they are getting big, big subsidies from the from the Japanese government. Yeah. So well, the taxpayer is really covering most of this now. Yeah. Well, Sh Sean, Jimmy, I will have to go. I will have to take my ride going down to Paris soon. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for coming along, uh, uh, Herve. Sure. Thank you and for having me and hoping to participate again soon. Absolutely, my friend. You Excellent. take care. So, and good luck with your uh, your week ahead anyway. Indeed. Yes, I'm going down to Paris to stay the week and to participate to the uh, Fukushima uh, Nagasaki anniversary at the end of the week. Excellent. Well, uh, we'll all be we'll all be doing things for the uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and that's yeah. uh, that's on Wednesday, I believe, isn't it? Yeah, or between the six and the nine. So there'll be and obviously into the weekend next yeah. weekend. So yeah. Yeah. obviously, a big heads up to everybody out there if they want to uh, contact their local CND, uh, their Greenpeace, uh, and a number of other uh, sort of organisations, and uh, Fukushima. 311 Watchdogs and Rainbow Warriors on uh, Facebook. Uh, obviously, you'll be getting uh, links to uh, various events and uh, yeah. get down there and uh, try and remember those those uh, you know tens and thousands of people that uh, were basically uh, murdered in my books um, yeah. and uh, by those atomic bombs and for all the carnage that it caused for generations afterwards. So, um, thank you, Herve. And uh, just the last word, remember, say no to nuclear before it comes to you. Say yeah. no to nuclear everywhere. That must be the change. Bye-bye, everybody. Absolutely. Thanks very much, Herb. Take care. Wind solar. Day. Wind solar. All right. Cresce só dinheiro, você diz que...